the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked in my enemies and my foes in this one life one thing one thing have I learned of the Lord and that will I seek after. As I will build the house of the Lord all the days of my life to be all the fruit of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. But even brothers and sisters We turn to our brochures as we turn to the hymn. Oh, great the Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, thy soul is abundant.
our people. We thank thee for this another privilege this afternoon. So that you are still alive, you are still unrepentant now. Uh, the good book says that today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. We thank the Lord for every soul that have been gathered here this evening. We have come this evening to pay the last respect to our dear loved one who have passed away from this life. But one thing for sure, the Lord, we know that beyond the grave there is life ever more. Yeah. So we thank thee for this privilege and this opportunity. So help us, dear Lord, as we gather here this evening, as we sit together, our soul will be refreshed and watered. Dear Lord, we have that great hope that when thou shalt come again, that death will be consumed. Bless right. us, dear Lord, and what we pray that our sin and this evening, we pray, God, that thou would have taken and granted unto us, and the humble hearts and beg his mercy and say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a great privilege for us who are alive. Thank you for coming. We thank God for joining mercy. We'll continue with this program, paying our last tribute to Sister Margaret. She cannot hear anything now, but we can hear it. So we give God thanks for the privilege we have and for our mercy. We continue with this program with the first lesson. Roberta Harris is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 15. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all see, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58 and last. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And God sing the word of the Lord. Could we say a big amen? Amen. This time we will be favored with a musical item from the church group.
not so much. The home is in a partial home. But we are going one by one. What do you say? Yes. One time we knew that old people pass away. But now young, old, middle aged and babies are passing away going home in the grave. Somebody said, who will be next? Somebody, sometimes the ones who ask the questions, like myself here became, I become the next. So what that means? Preparation. Now do, prepare. We continue with the second lesson. You read by Sylvia. Good afternoon, Our second lesson is taken from 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that he saw not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then the we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 18th and last, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Here in the communion of God's words, thanks be to God.
bodies in the casket. The spirit of Dr. God who gave it. Until the resurrection day. And what we are saying is just biblical. Thank you. We want to have a few students now. And Sister Maureen Anderson. Friend.
classmate. We, yes, we shared one grade together only. It was grade eight, the final grade at Ginger Ridge School. For those who knew Morgan, Morgan was Morgan. Morgan did what she wanted to do, and she did things her way. After graduation, our paths separated. You know, we went separate ways in life. And uh, our paths did not cross again until last year when I came here and I heard she was ill. I visited her, shared her up the best I could, invited her to church, and she came, you know, whenever it was possible, she came. And uh, I got her number, we called each other on the phone, I met her daughter, Karen, and I met Karen's children, and it was a pleasure knowing them. It was a pleasure knowing them. Or Shane is my very good friend, and Karen is my very good friend as well. Olive came once to church. I'm still waiting for her to come back, and the family as well. One thing I admired about her during her illness, she bore her illness bravely. She was very courageous, and she did not depend on anybody to do things for her, even though she was ill. She wanted to do what she could do. That was Morgan. On behalf of the church, this church, the Junior Resident Adventist Church, I extend sincere condolences to the family. May God sustain you, strengthen you, and give you courage. And when you remember Morgan, one of the things you should remember, she was brave. She was not afraid of anything. My wish for you all is that you will live for Jesus so that we all will go to that place called heaven. Because Jesus is there waiting for us. He has already prepared a home. I'm not going to say he's preparing. That's what the Bible says, he's preparing a home, but he has already prepared it. And it's there waiting for us. So let us live with Jesus. So that whether he calls us before he comes, or he comes before we die, you know, we will be able to live with him eternally. God bless you all, and may her soul rest in peace. I know Marlon from, I don't know, long time. Years, from some years ago. And I get to know Marlon through the Rasta man. He was a club ginger in the high life. He was a cheer. And he, he come to me and he said, Brother Mark, I have a nephew queen with a, you know, a sweet queen of a ginger. He said, what do you say? He said, you okay with the way you can tell you story, man? He said, all right, sir. And he said, come here for the weekend. So I built two chairs. And many of my children down will come in care of the book with Mark and was uh, the party of the queen of the country sister. The one still there, what do you do? <coughs> but she said, no brother. And then I went to her. And if I was forget to know Mark and then she went away and for years I never see her again. Years, years, until Finally, one time, I went on Simon worried of a sister weird. And when I come up, right before where she lived there, right now, she didn't live. The city is the Cabrón lady. So me, stop with the Cabrón lady, and just talk to the Cabrón lady, but she didn't want me. And she wear a cabrón, but she had a record, she had a record, and when he had chat, 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 what he said, see it, I'm ready, baby, I'm ready. Why are we at him? So one bloody open. She not tell me. You know what I can do me. You know me. She don't make for you, man. She said, you turn the wind bloody up. So she said, what are you doing, man? So many of them go and come to the world. She said, we run. When I, 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 when
Church, say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I give my heart to the Lord. And I want to tell you that when we moved into Spanish Town and lived in Ensom City, Morgan was a frequent visitor to our home. Morgan endeared herself to us, John Sayers and myself. And we always got a chance to be nice to Morgan. And today I feel happy about it. Many times she wanted a JP and usually I was able to make sure she got a JP even if John was not around. You know that JPs are not to charge for the service that they do? Well, I usually pay for Morgan to get a JP which I knew was wrong. But I did, and I am happy today that I did do that. And I want to tell you that Morgan has class. She used to stay with her uncle outside of Spanish town. And I do not have to say exactly what the gentleman up here said or Margaret could dress. <laughs> but she always looked presentable. And she never exhibited her body parts. She always dressed well. I loved her for that. And Morgan had care for people. She was a very caring person. I don't know if you knew that Morgan was so loving. If Morgan saw a little child on the road and the child didn't look good, or didn't look like it had anything to care, anybody caring for it, Morgan would begin to say, I wish I could get that little one to take care of. Morgan cared about children. And I think she actually reared a child for herself. Yes. 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 I do not know the child, but once long ago I heard, yes, thank you for standing. I heard that she was working for my daughter-in-law. I, but I didn't get a chance to know her very well. But I know that she must be a girl who would love people. Yes. And if you can love people, that's what the Lord asks us for you. Yes. Love him yes. and love our fellow men. Yes. Okay? And if she has learned that from Morgan, I know that she will do well in the world and she will maybe be one of Jesus' little feet running to do things for people. Okay? And that would be very good. Now, I want to tell you this. I met, I, I saw Morgan the last time in February. John and I were here and we saw Morgan up close to where she lives. And that was one day when Morgan was quite sober. I'm not saying that she's not a sober person, she was not, but she was always very exuberant, always laughing about something, giving a joke or, you know, but Morgan was very sober on that day, pleasant but sober, and we spoke together, and she said that she knew that she wasn't going to be here all the time, and she said that she knew that this is just where you spend your holiday. And you know what Morgan would say, this is where you spend your holiday until later on. Yeah. But I didn't even take it very seriously. But I was happy when she said she knew that you're just passing through here. She was not going to be here all the time. And you know, after that I understood that she fell. And I did not get a chance to see her at the hospital or to visit her up here. 
because unless I get a ride, I don't drive anymore. And God knows why. Because maybe I would be dead already. Because I would do too much. <laughs> However, I want to tell you that all those persons who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and will experience a wonderful resurrection. I am only praying that on that day, Morgan will experience a great resurrection. And for those of you who do not yet give your heart to Jesus Christ, I am impelled to tell you that we do not have tomorrow. The only time we have is today and now, right now, because no one knows what happens immediately after this. And so I am entreating you, and I am not talking about denomination, you know, I'm talking about being a child of God. Yes. Church, the building has nothing to do with it. And uh, you know the little beliefs that we have here and there and the other place, that is not being Christ-like. To be Christ-like is to know that you are a friend of God and Jesus is your brother and your redeemer and one day you will inherit what he has prepared for you. And I wish you well. And I hope that you will all make your way straight before it is too late. This time we will have been the remembrance by Sister Benito Thomas. After that, we will be having the musical selection by Mrs. Janet Lynch. After this, remember. Yourself. Her reply was, Sister Bill, 
You are Christian. <laughs> me are no Christian. <laughs> me have been more than more. <laughs> but with all of that, she had a great respect for me. For she said, I am your second madam. She keep reminding me of something I did for her little sister Yarn when she was very small. She, she had a breathing problem. She could not breathe through her nostril. She had to breathe through her mouth. So I could not sleep at night. I had to stay up to watch her. For scared we would, for me scared she would die. And what I did to release her from that attack, she always reminded me, which I didn't like, but I was a very comical. She was also a hard worker. She was, she was very active with her hands. And no one could do, do anything to suit her when it comes to her own business. God is the only judge, but I regret she never gave her life to God completely before she dies. Never got the time to finish right to do it. And I would work up early in the morning, I'd say 5.30, and by 6 o'clock I would leave her. And as early as I left her sometime, I met her on the road. And you see, she coming fast, fast. And she said, Binta, sometimes she called me Sister B, sometimes she said, Binta. She said, Binta, I don't give me a come now, you know. She said, what now? She said, no, I want to And you know, I have to turn back and to make me tea. Because it was that when we go over the hill there, never like this when the sun rise upon you, when the sun rise upon you, know, it's feel, you know what I mean? So when we go in the early man, you know, we feel a little stronger. But I couldn't really persist her and don't turn back. Because what come to my car, I say, suppose I just resist her, you know, and by the time I reach up the hill, I with somebody say, you know what happened? Father and drop down down there, so you know the conscience will really bother me. Yeah. Because I'm going to say, prevent her if she did get that warm supper tea in her stomach. She, you know, nothing would happen to her. So I always try my best. And whenever any time you see she come in, man, and she wants something, you see she will come better. And you may come to know, you know, may come bother you. She said, come, man, come. That's what we are here for. And let me tell you, she's very satisfied. And I can tell you what I noticed with her. If she come and she wants something, you a shop and it costs $15. That at the time that what she need at that time, she'll come and she'll ask for $50. She said, Binta, you want this and give me $50. I'll go to a shop. And if we give her some more, she would say, no, no. A $50 is everyone. Wow. You know? So sometimes we have to insist and to say, all right, man, go on with it because you may go and see something else that you need. Yeah, she was very satisfied. Yeah. You see, and as the sister was talking about her dress code, I've never seen Marvin in a court raging dress. Her body always covered. Yeah. Yes. And she had a respect for her body. She had a respect for her body. And what I'm glad about and I'm happy about, as I said, years to earth since that CST. You know, this little word said, don't scatter roses when I am gone. Give them to me while I carry on. I said, while her siblings then were far away, I thank God that me and my daughter and her granddaughter, we have played her part, what we could do. This could be more, but we don't what we what we could do. Yeah. You know, to her. Praise God, and that's what makes me so happy this morning. Yes. You know, and I always encourage about our, our soul. And I know this church have done their best 
You know, to enter to accept the Lord. You know, they plead with her. We don't know morning and evening, time and time. And I remember one time she was suggesting something about me, about what they were saying that they want her to be baptized and so on. And I stand here at my gate one long time out and something different and he was listening her. And I was bearing virgin her. And I was saying, Morgan, it's not about the day, it's not about the people them, it's not about the what denomination. It's about your soul and God. Amen. So I say, try your best. Make it up in your mind. Decide what you decide to do. But I know it would be best if you gave your life to the Lord before time changes to eternity. Well, God knows everything. Because even the morning when our daughter was carrying her away, I was passing, going to the field, and it was so happy because the time we had to be able to stop and assist her. And I would dare witness to her. And I said, Margie, just look to Jesus. Just ask him to just forgive you of your sins and to just go wash you. So all what we have to do, God is the only judge. So all what we have to do, leave everything to God. Bless the Lord, good afternoon. God gave life and he takes it away. God gave life and he takes it away.
she became knowledgeable of her family facing hardships. This mother could not afford to take care of her two children and her sibling sisters at that time, and she walked away from them, leaving them destitute. Because of Morgan's caring nature for others, she had to help. She adopted these two, two children, Karen Haynes, two years old at the time, and Gavin Cole, who was just one plus. Karen grew up within the family and is today a very special and splendid young lady having five children. As the years rolled on, Morgan got sick with cancer and after much prayer and treatment in March of 2000, the doctor declared her cancer-free. But after 10 years, the affliction returned with a vengeance. Like Joseph, although affliction cometh not out of the dust, yet man is born unto trouble. And since then, Morgan fought gallantly. But at last on November 5, 2016, her pain and suffering ended, as well as the misunderstanding, turmoil, abuse, heart and heartache that comes with the mixture of the life. Morgan will not have to fight anymore. The battle is won. The victory is hers. She's now at rest. We cannot learn thy purpose see, but all is well that's done by thee. More than left to mourn her passing, her adopted daughter Karen, her adopted son Gavin Cole, siblings, and they're affectionately called this Patsy, Quet Quet, Quet, Banga, Yarni, Auntie Yata, Little Brother Owen, Brother Duck, Lamar, Leon, nieces and nephews, Roberta, Shireen, Shimika, William, Tanika, Georgia, Paula, Jenny, Jody, Chunky, brothers-in-law, Seymour, Horace, and Vincent, adopted grandchildren, cousins, and friends. We love our mother. God bless you. Thank you all for the Alpha of the Church for your kind words, the Alpha of the family and more than that is dead. You have enjoyed all what you have said even with a sad heart. Nevertheless, so far, it's a wonderful evening. What do you say? Yes. We would not be satisfied. We did not get one little special word from the Lord. What do you say? Yes. Well, after all, we are in the house of the Lord. Pastor Swaby sent his condolences for the family that are able to be here this evening. But your hearts, the elder of the Blue Wall Seventh Adventist Church, Elder Carton Anderson, to carry a word of comfort to us all. We'll be hearing from him in a few minutes. Don't be weary, for you won't be long, I believe. Nevertheless, he will give us the message 
that the Lord has laid upon his heart this evening. Before he comes, Sister Meloni Levine from the Blue Wall SDA Church will give the song of meditation. But because you feel like you are comfortable, you don't want to praise God. But guess what? I am on a mission to worship God. Because I don't know when I will be out there and somebody will be inside there. Hello? 